Happiness is freedom. Freedom is having the choice to spend your time doing things that inspire you. Most people want freedom, but many people don't have a clear objective, a roadmap, or a strategy to achieve it. Everyone deserves to live an inspired and free life. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on our most meaningful work, we simply become better human beings. We can give more, care more, support more, and love more. I'm an investor, a trader, and an entrepreneur, and I get to spend every day doing what I love. At the age of 29 years old, I became financially free, and since then, my mission has been to help and inspire other people to achieve the same so that they can be more of who they really want to be. Always free is about having a free mind, being free to question the status quo, free to take risks, free to say no, free to say yes, free from social idealisms, opinions and beliefs, free to disobey and free to wake up every day and spend your time to make a difference that inspires you. You can have it all. Living a life designed by you isn't a stroke of luck or a result of circumstance. It's a choice. So if you want to learn how to become free and live an inspired life, join me for the number one show for financial empowerment and wealth creation as I share my insights, tips, strategies, and advice on what allowed me to be always free. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Jason Graceland. Well, 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 welcome back to the show, to the first show. Thank you for joining me. This is the Always Free Show, and I'm really, really excited to be here. I can already see lots of people in the chat here. I'm really, really happy to be here. Finally, we got this thing off of the ground. If you guys are here, let me know in the comments. The long-awaited show. This is the Always Free Show, and if you've been following me for any amount of time now, whether it's on my newsletter or YouTube, or my podcast, or you're in my trading community, or you're, you know, you're in my Tears of Freedom program, or you're just in my network, and my friends, and my family group, welcome, I'm really happy to be here, this is going to be a great, great show, I've been excited about it, it's been a long term coming, long time coming, and I'm excited to finally kick it off, and it's the first time that everyone in the, uh, everyone on, across all of those communities, um, there's like 50 odd, I think there's 55,000 of you on YouTube. There's about 20,000 on Instagram. There's about 10,000 on Twitter. It's the first time that whether you've been a, a, a podcast listener or a, a newsletter listener or a YouTube watcher, we're all in the same place. So I really appreciate you all being here. It's really, really great to have you all here. So this is the always free show. And what's to come in the show? What's the goal for the show? The goal of this show is to take you through what I believe to be the most important elements of becoming financially free. Okay, it's something that I've created my entire life's work around um, from business income to saving to investing to trading to generating uh, assets in a business to leveraging income. And my goal for this show is to get you to a place so that you can be more free, more inspired by the way that you live. Not because wealth isn't just about money. If you've been following me for any amount of time now, you'll know that my views are it's not just money. It's actual freedom. It's the time that you can buy and the way that you can wake up and choose how you spend your time that will allow you to feel flexible and nimble and free and then the financial side once you get to that place the financial side is really there just to support you on that on that journey so what's to come in the in the show i want to take you through everything i want to share with you all of the insights from everything i just mentioned from mindset to having a clear objective and knowing your numbers right through to personal finance structure automating and optimizing your expenses going through to investments we're going to be talking about um, ETFs, real estate investment trusts, index funds. We're going to be talking about stocks. We're going to be talking about growing your income business. We're going to have some fantastic guests on here. And the great thing about this show 
and this is the pilot show so i'm just going to ramble on and ramble on because i don't really care it's my show <laughs> but the purpose of this show is that we just go through all of that and we can the newsletter was great right the newsletter we had the charts and the diagrams and the images and you guys could really resonate with what i was saying through diagrams and illustrations when the podcast came along the podcast was started because someone uh, wrote to me and said they love the the newsletter but they struggled to read it because they're dyslexic it was probably my spelling <laughs> but uh, they couldn't read it, so could we put an audible version? So we launched the podcast, and when it went to number one in three categories, we really knew that we were onto something, and we knew so that we had some value to share, and it was being received by you guys really, really well. So um, we wanted to keep that going, and the great thing about the show is it's an amalgamation of both. We can now have the connection of the vocals and being in the room, um, and we've got the the illustrations as well, so that's really, really cool. Who we got here, by the way? Mia, Elaine Smith. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fanny Snaith, the certified money coach mindset. Excellent. It's really great to have you all here, guys. I really appreciate it. So before we kick off, the show is probably going to be about a half hour long. I'm going to try and keep it to about half hour. Where we go in this first show, I don't know, but I'm going to try and keep it to half hour. But if you're wherever you're watching from, make sure that you give plenty of this, plenty of likes. Uh, like it now let's blow up the kind of algorithm if you're watching on youtube as well if you're watching on youtube don't forget to uh, definitely like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you get um, notifications of when we go live in the future so why do i want to talk about this so much well i know what it's done for me the strategies that i've implemented in my own life from really the age of 22 to slash 23 uh, when i went out really on my own um, and got to a position where I had managed my money in a way that I could live regardless of active income, meaning that I'd created enough assets or bought enough assets or, or developed enough assets or had enough liquidity or all of that to be able to invest it in a way where I didn't have to go and exchange my time for money. And to me, that was one of the most liberating feelings ever now i've went along some painful uh, i had some painful processes along the way and uh, some of it i made a lot of mistakes some of it took me longer than i needed and really that's what i'm shaving off for you guys and i want to share with you everything because i truly believe that when we're free and we're able to focus and think bigger and have broader time horizons in our mind and deal with bigger complexities that's when we activate something that's great inside of us that's when we become better humans because we become more caring we put more effort and care and attention into our service and we can create you know we can do much better things in the world if we're not just closed in thinking day to day so the more people that can become financially free and get in a position where they choose how they spend their time the more they're going to be able to do inspiring work to them and the more they're going to be able to get up to good things in the world so that's the goal and as i say on this show we're going to have guests uh we're going to be able to dive over to the charts when i need to to the tools i'm going to be able to show you some of the tools so we've got all that good stuff coming and plus at the end of this show i'm going to announce the winner of a competition who is uh who's basically won the competition already i already know who the winner is we're going to announce that winner at the end of the show and you're going to win a fantastic prize all right so who we got here let's uh let's see who we got here first amazing awesome awesome excellent all right so before we uh, before we delve into this week's topic, which is really I'm going to start at the beginning, and I'm going to go over uh, mindset, a lot of mindset stuff in this episode because that's really one of the most important um, that's that's really one of the most important aspects for building wealth. It's a, it's one of the most important vectors uh, for building wealth because if you don't have your mindset right, then you're not going to give yourself permission to actually even 
live the life that you want, let alone put a strategy in place to, to go and get there. So some of you guys know about um, my journey. There was, I grew up on a council estate and I came from a council estate and there was, there was people who come from a council estate and have very little and no peers and no kind of motivational quotes and all that kind of stuff. And they seem to be able to attract money. They seem to be able to achieve uh, a level of freedom that other people sought after. And yet there's people who have lots of money and are raking in the money, and yet they are unhappy, they're unfulfilled, and they don't have freedom. And that's because they're kind of on this hamster wheel or not doing something that they really, really love. And for many of you know that story of when I grew up on my estate, there was two big light bulb moments. But the biggest light bulb moment was around there wasn't one strategy. It wasn't, there was a bigger picture. There was a much bigger picture because it isn't just about putting all your eggs in one basket. It's actually about a relationship between how you use money, how you scale your lifestyle, and also how, how liquid you are. Okay. Meaning that how much, how much you've got there to buy you time. The biggest light bulb moment for me when I was a kid was the fact that time was not money. Everyone kept saying time's money, time's money. Time is not money. If you believe time is money, you're going to end up one capped how much there's only a certain amount of time in the day. So if you've tied your income to an hourly rate, you're limited to how much you can earn. And what happens is you try to work more hours and that ends up in you capping out with responsibilities and uh, capping out in income and capping out in stress. And you end up going into rehab because you're having a breakdown or you end up so stressed out that you resent the job so much that you want to scale back and go back towards something you wish you did all along. So the purpose of this show isn't to get you to change and be someone else. It's the idea of always free. The principles of always free is to get you back of being more of who you are who you already are, and be more so you can choose how you spend your time. And that starts with mindset, all right? So a lot of people say, oh, it starts with purpose first. But having a purpose and having a clear objective and having a goal and having targets and all the rest of it, that is absolutely essential. But the reason mindset comes first is because if you allow people to get into your mind, you can't even set your own objective. You can't set your purpose because if you think about the physical world, you get pushed around, you get over, overpowered by people that are stronger than you, bigger than you, fitter than you, right? Your mind works the same way. There is, you, you have more people with more conviction and more confidence and more, uh, you know, they'll have more overpowering views and opinions that they'll put onto you and you allow them thoughts inside your head so you won't even be able to dictate or live by your purpose because you haven't got the right mindset. Does that make sense? How's everyone doing? Good stuff. So another thing that's important with mindset is you, you have to be able to have emotional mastery to a degree because if you haven't, you won't be able to manage the money that you accumulate. You won't be able to manage your time properly, your day will get filled up with other people's agendas, okay? And uh, there was a quote that Jim Rohn says, he says, if someone hands you a million dollars or a million pounds one day, you better hope that you become a millionaire quick so that you get to keep the money because you'll just disappear otherwise. And that is a mindset thing. That is just mindset. If this is how most people approach money. And, and by the way, if you've got thoughts on mindset, keep the comments coming in and I'll, I'll fire them up. Um, if you've got the thought towards money and you're thinking about when you get paid, what you're going to buy with the money, that is you not feeling like you're worthy of that money. This is why lottery winners all end up broke because before they've even won it, they're thinking about how they spend it. They're trying to, ex you know, repel it away from them before they've even got it. And the reason they do that is because they haven't taken the time to, to, you know, really understand why they deserve that and they don't feel worthy of having it. So they try to get rid of it. So if you're thinking, as soon as I get money, what can I buy with it? That is relative to, to a degree to your self-worth, to what you feel you're worthy of keeping and what you're worthy of mastering. And if we don't 
if we don't uh, master our mindset, what we do is we end up giving our money to those who are in power. And that happens all the time. This is not just my opinions. This is what's happening every single day, right? Give us a, a yes if you agree or feel free to shoot the comments in. Now, I was just having a conversation with someone on this topic. And they said that when COVID hit, they downloaded TikTok, right? And they downloaded TikTok. And what happened when they downloaded TikTok was they, their screen time on their phone. This is a guy who was just in my strategy session just now. The screen time in their phone went from four hours because they, they use their phone at work and stuff to eight and a half hours, right? And what was happening, which was really interesting during that time was he said he felt more and more depressed. So when we was talking about why he felt depressed and what was going through his head, he, okay, but we was talking about um, why he was scrolling through TikTok, felt less, he less, felt less motivated, demotivated towards where he wants to go, and he felt quite depressed, right? And the reason he felt depressed was because there was literally um, everyone on there who he was looking up to. You know, it, every single person he was following was making him feel like he was further away from his goals. And we started talking to this uh, a little bit. And you're not a, a real streamer unless... <laughs> we started talking to this a bit and he said he was really procrastinating, massively procrastinating. He didn't want to do anything. He started just not doing anything. And we started talking about the reason that people procrastinate. And again, it's a mindset thing because... There's really only two reasons that you procrastinate. And when you procrastinate, this basically means that you're trying to, you're putting off something, okay? And the biggest reason that people procrastinate, and this is where majority of the people sit, is because they're trying to, they're, they're beating themselves up for trying to do something that isn't, isn't important to them. So whenever you say things like, I should be doing that, or I should do that, or I should have that result, what you're doing is you're basing that on seeing someone with a result that looks that you've got this kind of fantasy about, but you're not seeing the whole picture. You're not seeing the other side to that. And because you haven't seen the other side to that, you just look up to them and you get procrastination because you want the result, but you don't actually want to do it. It's not important to you. So I see this with trading all the time up until 2020, Everyone wanted to spend more time at home with their family and be more free and be able to trade from home and do all this kind of stuff. 2020 came along and everyone's wish was granted. And all of a sudden, everyone wants to get out the house, <laughs> right? No one wants to be uh, with a family. So <laughs> there was this kind of period where everyone was realizing, actually, I've got all the time now. Why am I procrastinating? Why am I downloading TikTok? Why am I scrolling through social media? Why am I beating myself up for not doing what I feel like I should be doing. And that's it, right? So the, the reason that most people procrastinate is because they're looking, they're trying to do something that just isn't important to them instead of focusing on what they want to do, right? What they want to do. So this was kind of the question that came in this week where they said, how can you improve your mindset to achieve financial freedom? And we spoke about that from this guy. This was the guy that was in the strategy session. And I said, the other 20% or 10, 20% that people that procrastinate are literally in a state of overwhelm. So is anyone here overwhelmed with something? Is anyone here, um, you know, going through some kind of overwhelm or putting off starting something because it just seems like too daunting a task or you don't know where to start. It's just this massive task that you feel that you just can't start. So you, you're procrastinating because you're in overwhelm. Me sometimes. Something went wrong, but I'm back. All the time. Yeah, right. So that's because we don't break it down. The, the beauty of breaking down a goal, this is what you do. If, if, you're, if you're procrastinating because you've, you're overwhelmed, the way that we get over that is to break it down into tiny, tiny little chunks. Because if you're procrastinating because of overwhelm, the chances are there's some tiny little portion of that subconsciously 
that you're trying to avoid. You, you, it might be like the simplest thing, like making a phone call to someone that you just really don't want to do, or it might be a, a technical thing that you just know that you can't do, so you don't bother doing any of it, and you just go, uh, I'm just not going to do it, right? Anyone, anyone had that? <laughs> yeah, right. So here's the thing. If you chunk it down into tiny little bits, tiny little to-dos, not only do you identify that thing that you're trying to avoid subconsciously, but you see every little step along the way and it just becomes a to-do list. It becomes a to-do list that's not overwhelming at all. You can just work on ticking through them. You can allocate times to them and you eventually reach the goal inevitably. There's no if or maybe about it. You just, you just hit it. It's inevitable. So that's why I wanted to talk about that because mindset is really important when it comes to money because if you're looking up to someone, okay, you're devaluing yourself. And if you're devaluing yourself, your self-worth goes down and your ability to attract more money goes down naturally. It's, it's, it's linked. They're both linked. So if you've got a low self-worth, you're going to have low income. And you've probably seen the people with low self-worth, right? Uh, they talk like, oh, I couldn't do that. I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. And they're the ones that can't accept compliments. The people who, you know, you pay them a compliment and they say no. The people who um, just kind of walk in the shadows a little bit. The people who, there's, there's also people who have been in like abusive relationships and they go from one abusive relationship to another, to another, to another, right? And it's the people with low self-worth. They keep finding the same thing. That's because of their self-worth. But if you ask someone with a high self-worth, you know, could you do that? Yeah, I could do that. I could learn how to do that. If I don't know how to do it, I'll find a way to do it. They've got confidence. They believe in themselves. And that is the significant difference between people who end up just going round and round and getting stuck in a rut to people who actually get results and move towards where they want to go in life. So I thought I'd share that. I want to talk a little bit about uh, your language towards money as well, because I know we've got Fanny Snaith in here. Uh, can you pause the live YouTube and pop out the chat? There you go. Take action. Amazing. So you guys seem to agree with that. Now, the thing with money is money doesn't discriminate between anyone there's enough of it to go around okay and it is literally a medium for fair exchange so if you've got negative thoughts towards money right this is why this is why we're going over mindset by the way guys uh, this is the topic of this week's session because i believe it comes first if you've got negative thoughts towards money the chances are you haven't you, again, you're seeing one side and I want to talk to you a little bit about that and what you can do to overcome that as well because what I was saying before is money's just a, a medium for fair exchange, okay? Back in the day when there was no money and we were just bartering, what would happen is, is someone would say, well, I'll exchange this service for that service. Now, the problem with that is there's always going to be people that are willing to work harder than the others, Right? There's always going to be people that are willing to learn more, work harder, um, and serve more people. And here's the thing. Let's just say that you, we're back in the day and we're bartering and there's no money. Right? And let's just say that I, I've got a shirt that needs sewing up. Right? It's got a hole in a shirt. And I come to you and I say, you're a dab hand with a needle and thread. How about you just sew my shirt up? Could you do that for us? And then you say, sure, no problem, because um, my mum needs open heart surgery. So could you sort that out? And <laughs> stitching up a needle of thread on a T-shirt might take a couple of minutes and not take very long to learn and not provide much value. Performing open heart surgery is saving a life, taking years to master. And there's an imbalance of fair exchange there. So all money was created for was to level out that that fair exchange is a medium of service that is it so if you want more income you have to have more outcome it's as simple as that 
It's as simple as that. And I want to I want to bring on some couple of uh, a few phrases that I've heard people say when it comes to money. So let me just hit this uh, hit this button here. A lot of people with a negative view towards money will say things like money's evil. Uh, if you're rich, you're greedy. Being rich feels wrong, right? It's better to give than to receive. Uh, I don't deserve money. And what I would encourage you to do is take a look at these statements. And I know you've probably heard this before. You've probably seen things like this and just thought, just brushed it off and said, I don't really, you know, I don't have those thoughts. But do you? You know, do you have that thought in one way or another, at some point, or do you get to a limit where you think, oh, actually, yeah, I do feel that now. You know, perhaps you don't feel one of these right now, but maybe you get to a certain situation and then it comes up. This kind of, this little skeleton in the closet goes, you can't really do that. You know, it's, it's better to give to the receiver or you don't really deserve this like the lottery winners, right? So what I would, what I would urge you to do is take a note of these and write down any time that you think that you would say one of these things because there might be even if you're here i know you guys are here because you know you're on this journey but there still might be times when you think oh, i just feels wrong you know I, I know in fact i know that craig david if anyone knows who craig david was when he went to la the reason he went to la is because he wanted to drive a ferrari around and not feel bad right because he didn't feel like worthy of driving a ferrari in london so he went to he went to miami and i heard him say that he just loves it over there because no one you know he felt okay driving a ferrari so even at that level at the time he was worth nine point something million even at that level it creeps up so the key is this write down when you when you might think this or when you've said one of these statements in the past and the next thing to do is to once you've got that let's just say that you know, um, it, money's, money's evil, right? Once you've pinpointed when you've said that in the past or when, when you think that, think about why and what, what situation happened in your life to make you think that. What situation played out where you thought money was evil? What is that linked to? What, what is that thought going through your head and why do you think that way? Okay, that's step one. Has anyone ever had these thoughts, by the way? Let's take these. Uh... That's why most of the times the bad guy um, in the movie is always rich guy, part of the system. Those thoughts usually linger. It's effort to get rid of them. So here's a way to get rid of them. Here's a way to get rid of them. The best way to get rid of them is once you've, once you've identified that you've said one of those things, one or more of those things, and you do this exercise for, for all, okay? Once you've identified one of those, ask yourself, when you thought that, or when that situation occurred, maybe it was like your parents arguing about money, uh, and that made you think it was evil. Maybe it was, um, you know, maybe your parents broke up because of money. Maybe something else happened. Maybe the debt collectors knocked down your door, and you had this traumatic experience. Maybe you went bankrupt. Maybe your business went bankrupt. Whatever it might be that makes you think one of those statements, figure out what one it is and then write down all the benefits to what happened because that's what you're blind to. Just the way that you're blind to the way that you're looking up to people on TikTok and you're not seeing the other side. You're seeing one side. You're seeing the good. You're not seeing everything else and all the other things in their life where you excel beyond them. So, Write down exactly the statement, why you think it, when you've said it, and then think about what that's related to in your past and then pinpoint that situation and then write down all the benefits to that happening because there will be, a, there will be benefits to that. There will be benefits to that. Trust me. So any questions so far? Fire in the questions. You can feel free to hit in the questions. I appreciate we had a, had a bit of a technical glitch. We've dropped the stream once. Not too bad. I was expect That was expected. <laughs> uh, most of the time when things are not going your way neutralize it absolutely i inherited the saving money doesn't grow on trees uh now saving how can i find a way to earn money this is what i now tell my son great questions 
other people's thoughts that have been internalized exactly see that that feminine aspect to your brain that allows injected ideas and opinions and beliefs one of the biggest mindset shifts that i had um as a kid was when people were saying you know they were saying money's evil right and i remember at the same time they would do a syndicate lottery and they would go from a conversation of this is you know money's evil why can't the rich just give me some money uh, you know i money's root, root of all evil and then 30 minutes later they'd spend half hour talking about how they would spend the lottery money if they won the lottery and i remember thinking this isn't right i didn't know what it was i didn't i didn't have all the answers then i was 13 and a half years old but i remember thinking there's a conflict this isn't the full picture there's there's definitely something wrong here because people are trying to win something that they've just said that they hate and then on top of that i then did the car wash and i realized that actually if i spend the money that i got from the car wash on more buckets and sponges i have my friends working for me and i'm no longer washing the cars i'm freeing up my time leveraging my time i go around collecting the money i'm enjoying myself they get paid i get paid and it was a mind shift complete mind shift so the biggest thing was to question things question everything all right, we've got some more uh, messages. We're brainwashed so easily. All work, still no play. How long before a process starts to work? All right, so look, here's what I want to show you. I want to I share with you, um, just before I go into my kind of pointers on what I think are the most important things to ad adopt in your life and in your mindset to achieve not just financial freedom, but anything you want in life, um, I'm going to I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. Before I do that, um, I just want to talk about just rolling on from that story. When you look up to people, um, you can you can only see one side. Right. So I want to share with you and, and some vulnerability here, because leading up to this show, this is something I've never done before. I've never used all this technology, uh, this advanced technology. This is something I've never done. Um, my ner I was nervous doing this. But more importantly, when we did the, the Trader Vault the other day, I don't know if any of you guys came to the Trader Vault. We, we launched this big online event, right? There's like three, 400 people registered for this event, about 100 different countries. And we go live using this technology. And during that event, the cameras start to fail. The cameras start to drop down. And, you know, every five minutes we're swapping to slides. And I'm getting up and switching the camera on and off and resetting the camera every five minutes right that was stressful that was stressful because it was something that we didn't see coming it was something we could have done without but it happens but instead of thinking oh do you know what um why does this happen to me you know how how can how can this happen to me why does this always happen to me don't ask yourself those questions ask yourself the other questions which is how can i overcome this what's the worst that could happen you know how can we how can we carry on with this show? Everyone's getting value from it. We just cut out on this stream and you just carry on because the mindset is based on the questions you ask, which kind of leads us on to my kind of key points, key ideas and key aspects that if you implement these into your life and your mindset, you're going to have a great, you're going to have a great chance uh, at anything. Okay. Because you'll be kind of unstoppable. Awesome stage, by the way. Thank you, Robert. People may say these things just to fit into social circles that they're not part of. Yeah, so another thing is just really just going along with social idealisms, okay? Um, if you don't have a desire to end world hunger, don't say it, right? You can do it later on. You can do it later on if, if you want to, but, but don't feel like you've got to say something to fit into a certain way of thinking because you're here for you. No one else is going to care what you achieved in your life when you're dead only you and you've got 80 to 100 years to do it that's it tiny 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 piece of time we've got on this planet you deserve it you owe it to yourself and no one else all right so i want to talk about the uh the, the kind of key points here all right so when it comes to having a strong mindset that will allow you to achieve what i what i believe anything in life three things okay three things the first one is question everything okay so just like i questioned as a kid on the estate 
there is people telling who here okay who here um parents told them to learn in a manual car <laughs> Who here's parents told them to learn in a manual car and not an automatic? You'll be better learning in a, in a manual, son. <laughs> right. The reason they told you that is because it was better for them. It's not the better thing now, is it? We're all going automatic. We're going to autonomous vehicles. Not only did it cost you um, on more uh, <laughs> lessons and you had to take longer to pass because it was more complex and you spent more on lessons and you probably failed once and passed a second time. But it's not the right thing to do. It was a good strategy for them, but not for you. Okay? So questioning that, questioning things, anything anyone tells you, remember that they've got an agenda themselves to share with you the strategies that suit their values most. And everyone's got different values. This is why there's no right or wrong. This is why you have to be able to question things. Get on the property ladder. It's the best thing you can do. Get on the property ladder. H have all of your liquidity frozen up into bricks so that you have to go to work to upkeep an empty house and you're on a hamster wheel and you've got no free time just so you can pay for that house that sits empty all day. That is not a good strategy if you are um, looking for financial freedom. Let's see what, what comments we've got. Just got rid of 4K debt today. Uh, feels amazing. Question everything. Is this the real Jason Grayson? Do we have scammers? <laughs> Very good. So question everything. That is my number one, right? Number one. Question everything. Being able to take, there's no right or wrong, right? What you hear from one person, what you hear from someone else with a different opinion, understand everyone's got different opinions. Take them both, question them both, and then ask yourself, well, where's the media? What, what suits me? Because otherwise, if you don't, you're going to take a strategy from someone and you're going to feel very resentful because you're going to end up down the line trying to backward engineer your life to get back a few years to try and get back to, to the starting point. And you'll be very, very resentful if you, if you follow a strategy that isn't designed for your values. All right. Uh, the next one is be selfish first. Now, what do I mean by this? Be selfish first means put yourself first, okay? Because I see a lot of people out there thinking that they can just give and give and give and give and give, and they get nowhere. They feel very, very run down. They feel very resentful, and they, they're not putting themselves first. They become disempowered. And I see businesses go out and start to give money to charities and set up charities and all this before they're even taking any revenue or profit. Now... If you're selfish first, and, and I don't mean be an asshole, right? I mean, being able to give yourself permission to live your life and go after what it is you want in life. This is what Always Free really stems from. Being able to understand who you really are, because what you want isn't in the future. It isn't in, uh, you know, it isn't this external thing. Um, uh, some man or woman isn't going to make you happy. Some holiday trip isn't going to make you happy. Some other job isn't going to make you happy. You've got to make yourself happy. And the way you do that is stop running around doing things for other people all the time. And the moment you do that, you feel empowered. And you start delegating all the things that you don't want to do and design your life around everything that you do want to do. And there's people that will say, you can't do this. You can't do that. That's impossible. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. Let me tell you, um, when I was, I was running a business with 17, a team of about 17 people, um, full time, full business. Okay. I knew where I wanted to go. It started in order to get there. It started with a question of how do I stop doing this little bit? Then how do I stop doing that little bit? And I prioritized all of the tasks that I was doing and everything I didn't want to do. And I slowly worked towards where I needed to be. And I'm going to continuously do that for the rest of my life. So I'm always asking myself, well, how, I don't really like doing that. So how can I get rid of it? And I will, if, if I need to generate more income, how can I generate more income to cover that cost? How can I 
sacrifice some of my income to pay that person to do that so that I can free up my time to focus more on that so I earn more income. And that's how it works, guys. That is how it works. You want to be just focusing on being you. And once you're you and you can, you're intrinsically motivated to share things from inside of you, you will naturally earn more money than you ever than you could ever imagine because it's coming from a place of authenticity you're putting more love and more care into it you're more creative about it you're more passionate about it and you're going to have great success doing that all right and the last point okay we're going to announce the winner of the competition in in just a moment but the last point is take responsibility okay and what i mean by this is don't blame anything don't blame anyone or anything. Take full responsibility for your life and don't ask, why is this happening to me? Ask a different question, okay? Instead of saying, why is this happening to me? Ask, well, how can I get around this? You know, what, what's, what's the good that's come out of this? How can we solve this? How can we get around it? How can, what can we do to, you know, overcome this? Or, you know, what's the worst that could happen? By asking those questions, you're going to have a, a better mindset and take responsibility of everything okay take responsibility of absolutely everything so that's really my top tips if you implement that and you have that in your mindset questioning everything putting yourself okay before others first i mean first right not not forever because i'm a believer in fair exchange but First, if you haven't got, if you're not doing what you want to do right now, stop serving everyone else and get right with you. Once you get right with you, then you can serve more people. Then you can help more people than ever. Then you'll be the most selfless person ever because you'll be more creative, more calm, more supportive. You'll be able to financially support people more. And the people that aren't selfish first, they're the ones that are going to be selfish in the long run because when there's a problem, who can you go to to support the problem or have money? Not them. They can only support themselves or them and their partner or them and their immediate family. You're going to be able to help and serve many, many more people because you're thinking much longer term and you've got yourself in a position where you're truly inspired and you're living your life doing what you want to do. Now, the next step is to really go after what you want to do. The always free principles are about being free to question everything, being free to be you, being free to say yes, being free to say no, being free, right? Free of mind, free in yourself. And a lot of people experience this in 2020 and they think that financial freedom up until that point was heavily geared towards finances, but it's not. Because in 2020, there was 7.4 million people or something on furlough 6.8 million people on furlough, they were waking up every day, choosing how they spend their day. They were getting passive income in the form of stimulus checks and furlough. They were organizing their day in order and what they wanted to do. And they reduced their lifestyle costs and they stopped showing off to people because you couldn't go out. There was no keeping up with the Joneses. And people felt more connected with themselves than ever. More happy and more, and they realized just how little they needed in their surroundings to be happy. They got closer to themselves. And that is when we saw a lot of great things come out of lockdown. A lot of great businesses started. A lot of people started serving people in different ways. Amazing. So those are the top tips, okay? And I just want to say this one last thing on this. And that is you guys are here and you're watching this. And you're on this journey, right? There's going to be people close to you that you feel frustrated with because they don't get on board, even though you know that they've got the potential in them to be who they want to be. And there's a saying that you'll never be a prophet in your own home. And what that means is the people closest to you won't listen to you. They'll be the least likely people to take your advice. And the reason is this. They've come from the same upbringing as you. They've had the same opportunities as you. They've known you. They're close to you. They don't want you to be their teacher. So the best thing you can do is literally just do you, lead by example, and just 
the more inspired you become, the more free you become, the more happy you become, that will rub off and hopefully inspire other people to be who they want to be as well. So on that note, um, I just want to say, if you took anything away from this, let me know. Also, go away and write your story about money, your story with money from a third person. You know, Jason thinks this about money because of this. Write your story and why you think that. And I'll be interested to see those. You can send those into info at jasongraystone.com. Uh, I won't be sharing them unless you give me permission, but I'll be interested to see some of those. And that just about wraps it up. So one last thing is the competition time. Before we go to competition time, make sure that you like the video, like the live stream uh, to hit the algorithms. Well, give me more of these, more of these. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you get notified when we go live next time. So now it's competition time. Competition time. So, earlier on in the week, earlier on in the week, what I did is I went over to uh, my social media and I says, we're going to be launching this show. All you need to do to enter the competition is to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell and also share an image on social media of this show to let people know that this show was going, right? We sent that out to everyone on social media and we've had tons. You've seen Twitter and my Instagram and Facebook. They've been full. My stories have been full and I really, really appreciate you guys for doing that. Um, but we picked a winner at random and the winner, before I announce the winner, the winner is going to receive a bundle of brand new books on wealth building that I'm going to send to you. Uh, there's five or six books in the bundle plus you're going to win a 12-month access to my Tears of Freedom program to work with me over the next 12 months on your wealth creation journey. And you're going to have a two-hour uh, workshop with me, private one-on-one -on -one session to help you with your goals and structure your way forward. And the winner is, let's have a, a drum roll. The winner is a lady called Sarah Robinson. Well done, Sarah. Um, I know that you've been a follower for a long, long time. You've read all the newsletters. You've, you've, uh, you've also listened to all the podcasts. I know you follow me on social. Sarah Robinson, you deserve it. Well done. You've won the prize. The team will be in touch uh, tomorrow to get access to your information so we can send you all the information. And that just leaves us to say this, guys. Always freeze about living an inspired life. Okay, what is an inspired life? An inspired life is waking up every day choosing what you do because freedom, real freedom, comes from choice. And choice comes from being in a position to be able to make those choices and navigate through life and dance with life in a way that you want to. Okay, and the goal for this is to create an inspired life in you so that you can cover the lifestyle costs and have the experiences and experience life to the fullest in a way that is meaningful to you so that you're free of time and you can choose how you spend your days. Uh, and that is the goal of this show. Hopefully you enjoyed the first one, guys. Um, give us a like right now. Let us know if you enjoyed it in the chat. Congrats, Sarah. Congrats, Sarah. Amazing. And until next week, guys, take care. And I'll see you then. <laughs>